Hello everyone, and welcome back to Triad Travelogues. I am Richard, coming at you today from the outskirts of Shanghai, China, to bring you the Triad Travelogues podcast. Today we have a very special guest. This is Matt from South Africa, right? Yes. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about travel, and uh, I think he's been here for... How long have you been here in China? Uh, a year and one month, exactly. Oh, a year and a month? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought for whatever reason you'd been here longer than that. No, just... Uh, it's, it's been a long year, <laughs> let me put it like that. Yeah. The first year, I feel like, is like the honeymoon period for for China. For You know, yeah. it's like my first three months I was here, I just thought, I love China. I was in love with this country. I really, really did. Like everything about it was like was magnificent to me, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, where I was was a bit. It, it was a. It was a very interesting place. It's. It's. There, there's nothing honeymoon about where I was. I wasn't in Beijing, you know, where you had access. It was a very interesting place, to say the least. Um. So, like, when I t when I when I speak about it, a lot of people, do you know they kind of listen to my stories, going like, how do you still live here? Um, I feel like I've come to the honeymoon phase now. Like, I don't feel like I live in China anymore being in Shanghai. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Because they call Shanghai the most industrialized uh, city in China. I, some, I guess that's debatable. Some people will say it's Beijing. But I don't know. I've been to both. And I think Shanghai is a little bit more. At least it's more Western, you know, than Beijing. I, I don't know which one is more industrialized. But certainly uh, Shanghai is more Westernized. It just looks more Western, you know. Yeah, you you have access to more Western Western things. I feel the your food's more available. Your you know there are more Starbucks everywhere. There's more KFC. I do find people are a lot more civilized. Um, also, the pollution's a lot better. Oh yeah. Um, the pollution over here, it's I don't know. It it doesn't. You you can't see it. Whereas where I was, you can see it everywhere I go. You went um, per day on average. You were looking at a PM two point five of like two fifty every single day so yeah if you're looking down a road the furthest that you could see was about 700 meters to a kilometer um damn it's just like gray everywhere right everywhere you go man like you would go two months without seeing the sun and that's not because there were clouds that's just because there was so much pollution blocking the sun that you wouldn't be able to see it yeah yeah i could see how that would be really depressing because the few yeah. times that there has been pollution here that's been visible like that it's kind of scary because it's apocalyptic. You're like, oh my God, I'm living in like a wasteland. But I've seen pictures, like I lived in Nepal for a while yeah. and uh, Nepal is polluted, but the pollution in Nepal is less about like air pollution. I mean, there is air pollution, but you don't really see it. Like you see pictures from, from Delhi, from India, yeah. and you can just see the blackness in the air. But in Nepal, the, the pollution is very like, uh, uh, it's trash. It's very mm. colorful. Nepal is very colorful. I, I don't want to say all in Nepal, but Kathmandu is very colorful because there's like plastic bags all over the place Ugh. and they're all different colors, but it's, you know, you're knee high in trash all the time. But the, for whatever reason, that didn't bother me as much as the, the few times that I've really seen air pollution where you could go outside and walk around at it. And it was like this, like a fog, but it's not fog and yeah. you can smell it and it gets in your lungs and it just, it's very, uh, what's it's depleting it makes you feel just like sorrow and misery with, with us actually with with that um you get something called sad syndrome so you get vitamin d from the sun yeah. and because you don't see the sun you get it the, apparently you get it from living in the uk because it's so cloudy the whole time but the big thing that happened to us with the pollution was is um there would actually be your lungs wouldn't absorb as much oxygen so on the days that it was really polluted we would get this feeling that um we had vertigo so we were dizzy you know it felt like the ground was moving the whole time and that's just because of the lack of oxygen and other garbage that we were just busy breathing in the whole time like we i remember busy standing at a bus stop and i almost felt like i was standing on a boat that was rocking because the pollution was so bad and it just messed with our heads yeah it, it actually does brain damage yeah. I, I read a report just the other day that um pollution like a lifetime exposure to pollution can be like losing intellectually like losing two entire grades of school in terms of what it does to your to your brain so people's intelligence uh, uh, are statistically lowered by the air pollution because you breathe it in so much and i guess it makes sense like if you're oxygen depleted or whatever plus the vertigo feeling i think 
it's like you know if you try and if you try and stand up on one leg yeah. and close your eyes it's very difficult to do because your your spatial awareness is is based a lot on your sight yeah. so if you can only see three feet in front of you you know you got to have that kind of just i don't know being unstable i can't i couldn't live like that like i wouldn't be able to do that it's it's one of the reasons i came here definitely it's very it was very difficult to to do that also like you know we like from my apartment i stayed on the eighth story and i could see all the way to a mountain and you know like usually people like i don't know as a kid growing up we had a tree and if we looked outside and we could see the tree in the distance and the tree wasn't blowing we knew that the beach wouldn't be very windy you know but now the procedure in the morning of where i was in uh, the place was called shijadrong was you would get up and i'd look out my window and i would judge how bad the pollution was based on which building i could see that day Jesus. Um, it was no, it was crazy, man. The the pollution, the air pollution over there was insane. And nine times out of ten, um, I would compare what my pollution app said, you know, between Beijing and where I was, and it was always at least fifty points worse than Beijing. How far away was Beijing from where you lived? Three hundred kilometers. Three hundred kilometers. Yeah, one hour by bullet train. So the reason that you decided to come to Shanghai was because of the pollution, or that was just a contributing factor. Um, it was a big contributing factor as well as the, the, I got offered a job with a, a higher paying salary. Mm, um, mm. also the benefits that came with the new company was fantastic. I didn't realize th there's some things I don't like about Shanghai, which I enjoyed about, um, my, my old city more, but you know, I'm actually willing to put up with those just to get away from the pollution. Cause the, the effect it has on your health is actually quite severe. Upon getting here, you start to realize like, oh, wow, like this is how you're supposed to be able to breathe. Right, you know? right. And this is considered polluted. I mean, compared to, you know, other parts of the world. Like th yeah. this is considered pollution. Like, you know, if I, anytime the skies are very, very blue, just go through WeChat moments and look at all the pictures. It's all just pictures of blue skies. There's people that are like, you mm. know, look, look how blue the sky is, you know, but where I'm from and even like I lived in Baltimore for 10 years and Baltimore is not the not the cleanest city in the world. But man, like there's a difference. You know what I mean? Like their blue skies are normal <laughs> like, yeah. the skies are supposed to be blue right so it's definitely even here is this this is polluted but you're comparing this to something that's even more polluted you become better at identifying it um once you once you do so even like the city where i lived in in south africa was quite small but there was one part where you come on the onto the highway and you can see quite far into the distance and you can actually learn to spot in the distance, okay, that area's got air pollution because it's that specific color gray that is air pollution and that color is just a gray cloud or that's like you actually, st once you've spent enough time around like heavily polluted air, you learn to identify it. And like from what I've actually seen, Shanghai is not as, it's not more so polluted than other big cities. Like if you look at the sheer size of it, Different parts of Shanghai are going to have different levels of pollution. But I find over here, I don't find it any more polluted than any of your other major cities. Um, as far as population density and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I think, I, I'm guessing where you were at, the, the majority of the pollution was from was from factories, right? It, metal metal refineries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, those are the so big ones. That's, I think that's a big reason why, you know, Shanghai is, I mean, there's factories here, but it's definitely not a factory city. This is more of a metropolitan yeah. area. So, you know, the places that have a lot of factories or that are well known for their factories, those places are just gray all the time. Yeah, well, sometimes the pollution is so bad from... <laughs> It's usually during the winter, so they'll have the they'll run the factories heavily during the winter, so they don't have to pay to cool the 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 factories down. So the yeah. weather itself will just do that. And also over there, like you know, like the school that I worked at, we would do a lot of traveling. Um, so to get to work, like I only work twenty hours a week, and everybody goes, "Wow, you only work twenty hours a week? That's so easy." But you forget that you know I have to take a bus twenty kilometers. That's an hour of my time. You're not paid for that. Um, you know, an e-bike is cheap to run. It cost me two RMB to drive 60 kilometers. It was very fast as well, but it's also very dangerous and things like that. And the e-bike, the e-bike, I had yeah. a crazy fast e-bike, man. I had a crazy fast e-bike, but just factoring all of that into, to, to living in those places and the factories and how cold it was made me want to move here. But aside from the point, apparently all of that pollution sometimes blows all the way across China and can actually affect Shanghai. Right. Yeah. 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 
Which I didn't know. I didn't believe pollution could travel that far. Just, yeah. Yeah. Just shows how bad it is. Yeah. The so the you came to China then. You said you've been in China a year and a month. You've been in Shanghai a month. A month. Yeah. You just got to Shanghai. So you how old are you? Twenty four. You're 24 years old. So you moved here when you were 22, 23, uh, 22, I guess, right? 20, 23. 23? I just turned, I just turned, I turned 24 in June. Gotcha. So what was your, what was your motivating factor for, for uh, leaving your, for leaving, you were in South Africa at the time, right? Yeah. We're at in South Africa. Yeah. So, so I was born in Midrand, which is between Pretoria and Johannesburg. So mm. I, I, don't, I don't know which one's the capital. It's, it's, I'm pretty sure it's Johannesburg, but like Pretoria and Johannesburg, they're not too far apart. And there's a place in the middle called Midrand. Mm. Um, so I was like, grew up there. Then my parents got divorced and we moved to How Port Elizabeth, 10, 9, 10. Okay. Then we moved to Port Elizabeth, where I pretty much grew up there. And then I went to university over there as well. You lived with your mom? Yes. Okay. Yes. Then when I finished university, when I was finishing up my degree, um, there's a, there's big political issues in South Africa. Big. It's pretty much a race war going on. It's not, it hasn't gotten very violent yet. But if you look up far murders in South Africa, you'll see it. There's a big white hate thing going on. So there's a big party called the EFF, which actually started a free education thing for the universities. And they shut down the university saying that the government must provide free education. So what happened at the end of this is that I almost didn't finish my degree because these this group had shut down the university. So what I did, because, um, you know, there were other factors why I seriously needed to, to get my degree. Um, I actually started the protest to reopen the university. So I literally went to the mayor's office. I had a group with me that definitely made it possible. And we, we, we ran a protest to reopen the university. How, how far into your degree were you at that point? I was finishing it. I was finishing so you're it. Was almost like my, done. my last exams. My oh, okay, last gotcha. exams, like I couldn't write those last exams. Four year, four year university. Four years, yeah. Okay. Four years. I did a diploma, and then it was one more year to to get the degree. So I'm like halfway between a degree and an honors. Um, okay, gotcha, gotcha. It was, a, it was a funny system. So I I needed like just to finish that, and I was doing really well. At the end of the day, when I finally went to go to my uh, award ceremony, which was in February the next year, um, I actually found out I came second in my class. But I ran the protest and then through doing that, I met lots of people um, in parliament, met members of parliament who told us what was going on. And I heard of what was happening politically in South Africa and wasn't very happy about it. Then once I finished, I moved to Johannesburg to live with my dad, to find a job over there because it's easier. How old were you at that point? 20, 20, 2016. 20, 23, 22, 23. Okay. 20, 22, 22. I was turning 23. Mm. Then I was there and then I looked for a job and I went to all kinds of places. Um, I got a job interview at Porsche, um, which was the craziest job interview I've ever done in my life. What was your degree? Marketing. Oh, okay. Okay. That's right. You told Marketing. me that. Marketing. Yeah. So I did, uh, I did the interview with him, which was crazy, man. I was interviewed by seven people at the same time. I'm um, sitting in this really intense boardroom and it's like ambush mark, ambush interviewing where just before you finish the answering the question for this guy, somebody sitting on the other side of the table will ask you a different question. They do that intentionally. Yeah. They yeah, have yeah, it set up to, to see how you work under pressure. Wow. But that was insane. That was insane. How did like, you do in that interview? That was, uh, it didn't, <laughs> it didn't go very well, but you know yeah. what? Like halfway through the interview, it actually fell away. Because a couple of my friends, you know, moved to China and I knew how much money they were making and I knew how much money that, um, you know, this job was going to offer me. But once I got there, I found out more about the job and then I found out I have to work Saturdays as well. And then the, the, the place that I had to work was like uh, in like 50 kilometers away. Was that a sales was, job? Yeah, it was a sales job. Okay. It actually, actually wasn't even a sales job. I was a sales assistant. Like auto sales, right? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So it was also working Saturday. So like halfway through the Commission interview. Commission job? Not yet. Not yet. I wasn't actually a salesman. So I had to help do like the stupid work. Gotcha. Um, so like filling out paperwork, doing all the forms for the real salesman. 
um, you know, being there on a Saturday and, you know, while all the salesmen are doing other things, I'll like keep a client entertained or maybe, maybe drop a Porsche off if I was lucky enough. But m most of the time, like I was getting paid, you know, pennies to, to not actually do that much, you know, basically, basic, I don't know. I didn't see any satisfaction in the job. So halfway through the interview, I just kind of threw it. I stopped caring. Like, yeah, it, I just kind of realized this is not what I want to do. Right. And then I eventually did uh, find a job, a place that was willing to employ me um, for more money than the Porsche job, better working hours. Um, I got a company car, company phone. But then I started looking into China and I started researching it. I Skyped my friend who's on her th living on her, th who's on her third year in Chengdu. Mm. Um, and, you know, found out all the details and... I just looked at it and I thought, you know what, like South Africa is going so badly, you know, the political sphere isn't going very well, university, you know, finishing that procedure wasn't, was a bit rough. So, you know, I just thought, stuff it, you know, what's the worst that can go wrong? You know, it's first world country. My friend says it's very good. You know, they don't want to go back. Lots of people are leaving South Africa. So I just went and did it, you know. And so you just you just found a job here like online and then moved here or did you come here and then get a job after you got here no 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 i found a job online and came here okay gotcha found a job then came here yeah i did i did that too um i'm still at the same job too i've been at the same job for four years really yeah, yeah no. i've been a lot of people the one guy i know has been at the same job for 15 years really yeah no dude i've met some interesting has he people. lost his mind like has no, it gone crazy? He, but he want he enjoys a simple life, you know, like just the way like he likes. Li okay, he doesn't he doesn't see past the the pollution. He doesn't. Yeah, I couldn't stand it. That that same city that's heavily polluted. Mm. Um, but he he worked at the same company I was working for, and you know the way that he's worked it is. He's like got his own separate section of the company. So whereas training center, I was running off to primary schools, kindergartens, whoops, okay. high schools, um, all those sort of things. He just had private students that he taught. Yeah. And then you make he, more money that way anyway. Yeah. Yeah. He, but he had it all figured out, you know, like he, he basically the one time, like I used to meet with him every Wednesday and Sunday and we'd have a couple of beers and and talk and he would tell me like um you know for him it feels like he's working for himself he's got his own working hours if he doesn't want to you know teach that kid on that day he can go to the company and go okay you know we can't you know this must be moved you know if he wants to make yeah. extra money during the holidays he can tell all his students okay you can get extra lessons during the holidays he had his work visa through that company yes Okay, gotcha. Yes, so his work visa runs through the company, but he basically, you know, they, they pay the company and the company pays him. They're basically like a recruitment company, kind of, right? I mean... No, straight up giant training center. Giant, gotcha. giant training center. But um, he's doing private lessons. Through the company, yeah. So, so like the company offered private lesson facilities and then he 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 teaches through them he gotcha. teaches at some of the the public schools but um that's not bad that's not a bad gig i mean yeah. for somebody who's been through the ringer here yeah in in a training school yeah. i would i would much prefer to do like private tutoring definitely i've done private tutoring before and it's much 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 better especially when you're dealing with parents that aren't crazy uh, and yeah. you and if you don't want to deal with the kid you can just quit and find somebody else and that's what i really liked about it whereas at a training center you just have to deal with whatever comes at you oh no training centers are the most unorganized places <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. world hey, that's that... a good word unorganized chaotic oh, absolute just that, and they just expect you to perform that right. that's the thing that blows yeah. my mind you know is that You'll go there and they'll tell you minimal information. You know what? You know, like, I feel that if you wanted to really know how to how to work at a training center, like kindergartens can also can also be garbage. Like the one I'm working at now is spectacular. I've I did not know a place like this existed in China. Um, but, you know, the training centers for one, you know, I feel you'd be better trained to actually teach at a training center if you actually had um you know when you do like a drama class an improv an improv drama class if you want to know how to be good at a training center do improv drama lessons there we go because you're just entertaining a class of kids yeah, but basically you'll go there you know you'll have this whole lesson planned and then you'll walk in there and then you know the chinese english teacher who's supposed to be your assistant who nine times out of ten can barely speak any english plays will on her say, phone 
Um, no, but but before before she plays on her phone, she'll tell you. Um, I want them to learn about sports today because uh, that's what we learned in the book yesterday. And you're like, I don't have a lesson planned on sports. <laughs> and then you go, but 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 I want a lesson on sports. St- do, who cares what you want? Right. You know, right. you must just do a lesson on sports. You know, no, there's no consideration put in for you. You you must just. Yeah. You know, it's it's yeah, training centers, man. Yeah, yeah. Unorganized is, is a perfect word. They they don't they don't coordinate schedules. Like the place I work at, they don't coordinate schedules. I never know what my schedule is gonna be. Like they'll they'll schedule me for a day, you know, let's say Wednesday, my day off, and they won't tell me. Yeah. And then they'll call me ten minutes before the class. Where are you? <laughs> yeah. Uh I'm at home. Well you need to come you need to call you have a class? Like and then if you say well, I can't I can't come in I can't come in I'm busy I'm in the city or whatever I can't come in they say what are we gonna do I don't know don't you have another foreigner teacher there today right now why don't you have them teach my class uh, no we can't do that why not because your name's on the schedule <laughs> it's this really ri- this rigidity you know this like extremely yeah. rigid thing like it's we extremely made it- rigid but like. You know, not not as far as telling you what needs to be done. Right, right, right. But the point is that you write it down and it said, this is what we need to do. Just like you were saying, yeah. today we need a lesson about sports. Well, I don't have one, but we need one. Yeah. <laughs> you need to do a lesson about sports. I've had that happen. The same thing happened to me about basketball. Yeah. But I was, uh, it was during summer camp uh, a few years back. I was brought into this. Instead of my normal summer camp classes, I was brought into this classroom in this other school that I'd never been to. My boss, he tells me their basketball, you're, there's like 30 uh, basketball, it's a basketball team. There's like 30 kids, this tiny little room, smaller than this room we're in right now, filled with these huge kids, these big basketball player kids, you know? And he's like, they don't speak very good English. You need to just talk to them about basketball. And I was like, I, I know nothing. Literally, I know zero things about basketball. Like, I, so I watched Space Jam, and that is the extent of my knowledge <laughs> about basketball. And I'm pretty sure that wasn't based on a true story. So, I, you know, what am I what am I supposed to do? Just talk to him about basketball. So I just went in there, and it was the most awkward hour, you know? Because I'm just uh, sitting there yeah. like, uh, so you guys like basketball, <laughs> you know? And none of them speak any English, so, so we don't have any idea what we're talking about. I just, we threw a ball around for an hour. Just threw balls around. I like yeah. got the trash can and was like, so who can, who can throw the ball in the trash can, you know? That's what we did because there was no foresight. Is that the word? Foresight? Yeah. There was no like, the whatever, there was no planning. It's just like somebody made a decision, but the decision was never actually transferred to the appropriate parties. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they it, did their job, but you know the fact that it yeah. affects you doesn't matter. That actually, my last day teaching in a training center, what what happened was, um, you know, they they had this four week plan that uh, we were teaching about different countries, and then on my last day, my last day, okay, now it's your last day. I'm about to move cities. This has been, you know, we're all I've made lots of friends in that city, and you know I'm planning to go partying, man. I'm gonna do it properly one last time. So I started five. Yeah. Okay. So what happened was, is, um, you know, at 11, I had supposed to have like four more classes for the rest of the day. And then after I finished my classes at lunchtime, you know, the, the, the teacher comes and says to me, um, you don't have any more classes today. Fantastic. Okay. What time was this? 11.45. Okay. So um, <laughs> I, I speak to her. I say, are you sure? Because we're all used to this where uh, they don't think. Maybe. Yeah. Well, 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 that, that's we'll, another one. We'll talk maybe. about maybe. We'll, we'll talk, talk about, about maybe, maybe okay. as well. Maybe. Maybe. My new word I hate. And um, <laughs> I said to her, go and find the woman that runs this place, the manager, and get her to tell me that there are no more classes. Okay, okay, okay. Goes. Fetches her. Comes back. Manager lady doesn't speak any English. Okay. She said to me right now, and I'm telling you that you don't have any more classes today. 3.45. 3.45. Please note, I went to my friend's house at 3. Mm. I started drinking at 3. 3.45, I'm like four beers deep. Damn, and dude. then I That's get a message. That's pretty good, 45 minutes. Yeah, no. Are yeah. <laughs> oh, they big beers? No, no, no. Like little, oh, the little, little cans. cans. We, were, we were starting slow. It was okay, going to be a okay. long night. And then I get a message. Uh, you have class now. Where are you? Are you joking? 
<laughs> you, you taught the class though, right? Did you teach no, the class? I, didn't. I told them no. No? It was my last day. Dude, it would have been fun. The last class you go Jeez. in like I mean you weren't drunk four beers in, right? Just a little uh, other buzz. Dude, 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 to to do that I would have had I would have drank four more and then gone and taught. Like <laughs> I was in no mood to ever see these kids ever again. I'm busy thinking <laughs> Bye bye training centers. I don't have to deal with this ever again. And then they message me after a couple of beers, and it's it's already left my mind. Can you come and teach a class? No. <laughs> they just wanted to see how much more they could squeeze out of oh, you. Oh man, that's what they do. Yes. You know, like I, I've had these classes that are private classes where they say, "Hey, we got a couple of kids. My me, my kid, and my friend's kid. You can come in and do this, right?" We teach, you know, we'll pay you whatever for two kids. I say, okay. I go in there and teach the class, you know, wh whatever. It's once a week. You go in the next week, there's three kids. The next week, there's four kids. And then all, all of a sudden, you got a dozen kids. And it's like, okay, so you're going to you're gonna need to pay me more money because I was being paid for two kids. I got a classroom full of kids mm. now. Somehow it just happened. Now I got, you know, 12 parents standing around with cameras, like videotaping me teaching this class. You need to pay me more. And it's like, they do it on purpose, you know. It's just a yeah. little bit, see how much I can just squeeze out of you. And uh, yeah, it's that's why you have to be, because the... The hurt feelings thing doesn't happen here in terms of business. So you know what I mean? So it's like mm. bottom line, this is how much you're going to pay me. You know, I'm. A, this is how much, how many hours I'm going to work. I'm not going to do any more. And I feel like people from the West have a tendency to kind of try to be more lenient because they don't want to, to make people feel uncomfortable. But in China, it's business straight up. It's business, you yeah. know? You know what they they you know what that guy that's been here for fifteen years like I came here and he was like my only friend for the first six months so it was quite great crazy like moving to another country and also like I didn't expect so few people to speak English like Shanghai you are blessed if you come to Shanghai and you go wow Chinese people can speak English it's a lie <laughs> Shanghai people speak the most English okay Guangzhou is also pretty good I went there where I was. No one speaks English. They can't even understand your Chinese unless you say it perfectly in their dialect. Okay? Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to come to China here, and yeah. I'm going to learn Chinese and speak to the locals. In Shanghai, you can do it. In the smaller cities like where I was, you couldn't. So I came here like it was very difficult. But he, because he'd been here for so long, he gave me so much good advice. Um, one of them being that when I got here, I was busy teaching at a kindergarten. And uh, in China, by the way, if you've got blonde hair, you're made of gold. And if you have blonde hair as well, you're American, hey? You must understand, I'm not South African. Yeah. You, I'm American because I have blonde hair. Did you tell them you were American? I tell them now because the, actually, I, I, t I actually lie to Chinese people who can't speak English yeah. and tell them I'm American because I was standing in the elevator the one day. And we we're busy going down from the eighth floor. And um, she, I can kind of make out in Chinese what she was asking me. And I'm like, none fair in. None South fair Africa. South African. And she started hitting me. Like, like slapping me and I'm like what is going on she's okay. angry yeah genuinely angry. The old, she's an old woman old woman yeah 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 but she she wasn't exactly being soft and I'm like busy looking around like do I need to beat up an old lady <laughs> like what is going on and then the other lady in the elevator could say enough English and I, like she said she like told her and she said like I said why is she hitting me she says because you're lying to her what do you mean I'm lying to her you're not black yeah, that's what she said because, and then she she was also under the impression only black people only um, black people live in Africa. Yeah, I'm like after that experience, like if you do not come to me and speak perfect English and ask me what country are you from, I'm American, because right. my life is easy. And usually they just smile at you, shake your hand, and they walk away. Yeah, yeah, I I, I have some Russian uh, friends who teach. Oh, yeah. And they're all from America. <laughs> yeah, well, or Canada. Or Canada. Because yeah, nobody yeah. wants a Russian teaching a kid yeah, English. True. Even if that's their really English true. is good. Like, and that's the funny thing too about the like race. You could be a black dude that has a doctorate in education from the United States in perfect English, and they're still gonna gonna choose some like junky looking, like yeah. creepy white dude just because it's all about like appearances it's not even it's not necessarily racism i mean it is racism but it's not necessarily just about race it's more about like they, they can't wrap their head around like like Yay. you know black from this place white from this place i want my kid to learn american english you're a white guy you need to teach my kid yeah. you know and they just don't get that like black people can come from america white people can come from africa you know 
And then yeah. Chinese people or Asian look East Asian looking people can come from the States too. But if you're East yeah. Asian and you come to China to teach English, you're going to make like an eighth of what I make. And just because of the way you look, it doesn't matter if your English is perfect. You don't even know how to speak Mandarin. Mm -hmm. If you're Asian looking, you're not going to get a job in China speaking, uh, teaching English yeah. unless you'll true. be an IA or whatever, whatever they're called, the TA. Uh, the, yeah, the assistant, the IE. Yeah. 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 No, even, even with that, like... The, the the misconception but even though like you know like going back to south africa i got a lot of dumb questions like also the do they eat dogs over here like the amount of times i get asked that i'm like dude seriously stop asking me stupid questions um what was the other one dude i've seen a dog strung up right down the street yeah strung no, up by his feet no no but like like they obviously eat dog yeah okay but it's it's not everywhere but like they, people always say like you know, how do you know you're not eating dog all the time? And yeah, it's yeah. expensive. It's actually something that, that costs quite a bit of money to buy. You're not accidentally. It's like somebody saying, like, I bought a watch and I accidentally bought a Rolex. That doesn't happen. Wouldn't we all like to accidentally buy a Rolex, hey? Unless we were trying to buy some other expensive watch. But something that's expensive, you don't accidentally buy it. Unless you were, like, stupid and looked at the menu and went, I'll have that, you know, and it turned right, out to be right. dog. But usually if something's a higher price than the rest of them, you'll investigate and go, excuse me, what's this? Yeah. The dog thing, though, like, the, I don't think I've ever seen dog on the menu anywhere in Shanghai. I can't read the Chinese. But I, like I said, I've seen a, a dead yeah. dog strung up. And when I went to, I got married in Jilin, where my wife is from Jilin province, close yeah. to Beijing. And that's where her parents are from. That's where she grew up. And they had dog straight up on the menus there. Like, they, you know, her friends asked me, we went to a restaurant, a nice restaurant. And they asked me if I wanted to try dog. And I was like, no. I'm a very adventurous eater, but I just can't can't i just yeah. can't do it you know it's a bit i don't know i find it unnecessary it's yeah. just not something on this is like snails okay i'll do it i feel nothing for a snail but i've like, eaten snail yeah yeah i've eaten frogs snail too. too frogs are cool i don't i don't I, mind I that i actually ate frog accidentally the other day I, li um, I like it it tastes good it's good it tastes like dude i thought it was chicken we it's chicken-esque yeah with um, different bones but it's different we get served food at my school so our school during the week we get breakfast lunch and dinner and then we must just feed ourselves on the weekends yeah and uh, I was busy talking to the one British guy who's been in China for four years. He's been at that comp our company for a year already. And he was just talking about the food on the plate. And he's like, yeah, this is a bit of this. And this is just, and we had just finished eating. And he said, yeah, but this I don't like because this is just a frog's rib cage. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what did you say this was? Frog. And I pointed my plate and I said, what's this? Frog. So I've just eaten frog. Yes. And he turns to me. You didn't know that was frog. I'm like, no. <laughs> like, does, I, it, does it bother you though? I, for no, whatever reason. it didn't reason... bother me, but it was just something I like. It, it, it's almost something you want to like. It, it's weird eating it accidentally because I honestly thought it was chicken. It, it, it had the same density as chicken. Yeah. Then he, 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 he did make me feel kind of stupid. He's like, dude, have you ever seen a chicken with bones that thin? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, yes, I'm an idiot. But They're big toads like the really big oh, dude i saw they're i saw a video big. of like a frog farm the other day dude like jeez these things are monsters yeah 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 they're like, they're big giant things like size of your face it's huge but just like it's something that i would have liked to know you know it's yeah. always nice to know what you're eating you know like to like evaluate it but now i can honestly say it tastes exactly like chicken because that's what i thought it was after eating not it. exactly but it does taste chicken-esque yeah, it's a little smoother yeah, I, yeah. I, I, like, I like i like frog a lot yeah i, I don't know I, I, I like it a lot it tastes nice but it's a lot of effort to eat a um, lot of chinese food is like that mm. I, I i've talked about this before how the there's a kind of a ritual ritualistic aspect of eating here yeah and in the west it's like just give me the food and i want to eat it give me you know we have like hamburgers and chicken fried steak and if it's complicated to eat i really just don't want to eat it you know mm. it's like in the west we just eat I just want to eat it give me a plate of food and we eat it but in china there's a people eat for a long time they yeah. sit around a table everyone shares all the food and they eat and eat and eat and it's like some of it is a lot of effort for just not much meat, man. Yeah. Like the, you know, the... Uh, the little lobsters. Yeah. yeah they're not even that good. Like my wife loves those things, but I just, I'm not, I'm yeah. not into and then them. You, but you spend most of your time digging, right, right. like digging them apart. And then the thing is you order a lot of them. Yeah, and then by the time, them, yeah. by the time you, you know, you finish digging through your third one, which isn't that much food, um, they're all cold. Right, yeah. Which I really don't enjoy. I don't know. Like, those things were a bit stupid to me. I don't get those. 
prawns are okay because it's got a lot more meat. I like I, I like prawns. Yeah. Yeah. You can just bite into the middle of them. That's what I like about them. You just, yeah. You know? Okay. No, I, I don't like. I don't dig the shell. Although I must say, over here the shells are a bit lighter. Like you can actually eat the shells. Yeah. Here, I, like. I, yeah. I don't mind as long as it's not too much. You know. Yeah. But I, the effort. I don't like the effort. Yeah. For China, for people here, I think there's a social element to it. Mm. To sitting and picking things apart and eating them. It's you know it's kind of a, a way to we socialize over eating as well, but it's just different. It looks different here. There's kind of a they, they do yeah. it for longer. They do it for a lot longer. Yeah. And I they, must say, I like the eating culture here. I really like. I like sharing eat. food. I, I like sharing the you know, and and because in in the states it's very isolated. You have your plate, and it'd be real weird yeah. for somebody to just grab your food. Oh no! Do you 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 yeah, put a mine. plate through their hand? Yeah, I've got I've got friends that like literally. If somebody they get like seriously offended, like if you're just joking, you know, and like you 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 go and you like steal a chip off somebody's place, you know, you can kind of play it off as a joke. Like, okay, that person's a bit irritated. I've got a friend who like he will go through the roof. If you take his food, oh, you, you, you don't touch this. No, you don't ask. You don't look at it. You, you just. You just Why is that it. though? That's that's so odd. It's not like asking someone if you can borrow their car. You know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Some people are very touchy about their food, but then some people can't stand like the Chinese way. The Chinese way of eating, um, where you're actually, it's it's actually a lot more sociable. I find where it, it forces you to interact with other people. You know, because it's all just like on the lazy Susan in the middle and then you've right, got to right, spin right, the right, table. Right. So if you want that, you have to talk to that person and right, say, listen, right, can right, I have right, that? Right. Whereas, you know, you have to interact with the other person. So I find it a lot more social compared to here's my little plate and I spend the whole time sitting down right. looking at the plate. Whereas now I'm busy looking, okay, what do I want to eat next? Hey, you spin it. I want that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I. I, I would I like it. I don't necessarily prefer it, but I do like it. Um, I I'd like to just you know sometimes have my own plate of food. But if you're yeah. the one thing I really like about about eating out in China is the person who invites you pays for your meal. I like that. Yeah. In the states, you just you pay for your own meal. I mean, it's very rare that you don't unless it's like it's it's a. Uh, uh, they talk about it before, you know, if they, but generally if somebody invites you out to dinner, everyone pays for their, their own meal. Yeah. Right. But here it's like the person who orders is the person who pays. And that's nice. I kind of like that unless I'm the one that, <laughs> that's ordering. Yeah. I find uh, over here, like I've been invited to a couple of interesting dinners where for them to pay it's for them. I find it's for them. They, they take a couple of photos, they put it on their WeChat moments and they look very good. Yeah. So like I found, especially in the North, like people would fight to take right. us out to yep. dinner, which was quite nice sometimes. But then also sometimes like, you know, you eat some really strange food and then sometimes they'll invite you out on a work night. Now, how much Baijo have you drank? I don't like Baijo. Okay. I, I, I've drank enough of it but I, I don't like it i call it blackout juice okay like yeah i don't like the, the amounts of times i've woken up and not remembered a thing i've done the night before because of baijo is just it's unbelievable but it was it was very interesting you know when you go out to dinner like the amount that you're expected of to consume right like the amount of baijo that goes around yeah and it's also good baijo like, it's like, usually when I went out and I'd drink with like the parents or something, it was never through my school, it was my friend's school and they'd invite the blonde guy with, um, like it would be absurd amounts, you know? And like, there's no, com like, you know, I, he's got work tomorrow. So me having to go and teach children tomorrow, that's not a problem. Just let the teacher go to work hungover, you know? So yeah. Yeah. My boss is like that. Yeah. My boss yeah. will order like wine and beer and just be like you have to drink drink yeah. drink there was one time he was paying me to drink okay. like they did this game with they like wechat game where everybody grabs the red packet you know yeah, yeah like he puts the red packet on wechat and everyone in the group grabs it and whoever has the biggest amount they have to drink you know a glass of wine Jeez. and if they can do it like three times they get money and i came home once the definitely the most drunk my wife has ever seen <laughs> i came home with like 900 rmb in my pocket and i was just a mess like i was like professing my love for her she was so irritated like she was really, <laughs> and i i pulled this big wad of money out and i was like look <laughs> i made you know i made 900 dollars, and that made it okay she's like oh okay well you're wasted but at least you brought home 900 dollars, you know or 900 rmb all part of the job yeah all part of the job you, you were talking before about going back you went back to south africa you said yeah, right? yeah, yeah i went to go visit in february this year and so people have misconceptions about china I mean, the dog thing is not a misconception, but I get that. People do ask that question. One, one of the first questions I got like two days in 
um, was that, like, do they all own samurai swords? Really? Yeah. Who yeah. asked you that? Oh, dude, I they got to be joking. I can't say. No, dude, they genuinely thought that. They genuinely thought that, you know. And it was that. Have that, you ever even seen a samurai sword here? Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't think, I, I don't think no. I've ever seen one. But it's just the wrong culture entirely, you know. It's yeah, like, you're right. It is it, the wrong it's, culture. You know, it's 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 something really stupid. Like, um, you know, it's like going to... Um, oh God, let me think, man. Like, it's like going to New York, you know, and asking, you know, do do they wear cowboy boots there? You know, because we, we heard like the old Wild West was in America and in some places they still do that, you know? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just like places are different, you know? And also this thing that like all Asians are the same, you know, like I get very irritated when, you know, Chinese people think like all Westerners are the same and you're like, you're all Westerners. Why aren't you all friends? I'm because that guy's an idiot and I don't enjoy him. You know, like people also in South Africa sort of expected that, you know, that all Asian people are the same, you know, that like the Japanese, the Chinese and all that. East East Asian people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like Middle East is Asia too, you know, like Middle East or like India. But it seems like when, when, when people are like refer to Asian people, they're generally talking about this part of the world, like China, yeah. Korea, Japan. But then they refer to because really, like most of the world is Asian. Like over yeah. ha- over half, well over half the world's population yeah. is just in China and India. Mm. But like Indians are called Indians, but they're Asians. Nepalis are Asians. Like you know, uh, Arabics are Asians. And also, how like different they are. Like in the north, like the, the the Japanese hatred isn't so big over here, but in the north, my man, at the KTVs, they just don't talk about it here. No, 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 no dude. In the north, like the at the KTVs, the the signs up. And on the signs, uh, at a lot of the, the KTVs, especially the older ones, it'll have three things written on there. No food, no food and alcohol, no dogs, and no Japanese. Really? No, on, like, plaques written on the front. Those are the three rules of things that aren't allowed in there. So what happens if you're walking around and you're Japanese? And, I mean, can they really... I, I feel like if you don't speak, they really can't necessarily tell the difference. I mean, they're all from the same place, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, look, where I was in the north, like a lot of a lot of things like happened over there that like it was it was a very dark corner. So like, you know, if you if you were Japanese and you were running your mouth off and you ran into the wrong crowd, like you would probably go missing. In in the north where I was, mm. like the things that happened there would never happen over here just because it's such a small place. Um, you know, the two the 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 two big um horror stories that that i really have from that side and the one was um the one guy he was canadian and uh he um a guy you knew i don't know and this is a story i heard from another guy and uh he he was dating a chinese woman and one of her friends was down from beijing and the three of them went out and they partied and then about 12 o'clock they decided to go home and they got into a cab and they drove a cab, and then as they were driving, some co- another cop pulled in front of them, and three Chinese guys got out, and the one stabbed him with a screwdriver, up something stupid like sixteen times, and then uh, he wound up in hospital. They were angry he was with a Chinese yes, woman. They were angry because you know this this foreigner coming and stealing our woman. Mm. Um, and he wound up in hospital. And what happened was, is when they was there for the first pe- little bit, um, he. Um, he, or these, there were three men and, uh, you know, he decided to take them to court. Now in China, because of, there's so many cameras everywhere, it's not like in South Africa, the States where, you know, like we, we had the Oscar Pistorius case, he's South African. So it's like, not if you have a really great lawyer, you can potentially get off. You sure, know? sure. In China, there are cameras everywhere. If you attack somebody and it's on camera, it's yes or no. So it de- also, I just want to point out, everywhere is not an exaggeration. They are everywhere. You will never, yeah, ever yeah. be in a place where there is not a camera, especially in, yeah. in Shanghai. And um, so this basically what happened was is that it came to the point where this guy could ask these guys for any amount of money. And if they didn't pay it, um, they would go to jail. So what he actually did was he asked them for something stupid like 600,000 RMB. Mm to 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 pay to pay um for for him not to prosecute them and get them sent to jail and how badly was he injured 
Look, mate, 12 times with... It's being stabbed 12 times with a screwdriver. Um, you know, it could have been seriously fatal, but apparently it missed all major organs. I don't know how long the screwdriver was. I don't know how sharp it was. Um, I don't know, you know, what condition it was in. But, like, the, the fact is the, what, the intention... They had seen him, like, at a club, right? And they yeah, followed yeah, him. The, the, their argument was that um, when he walked out, he kicked the tire of their car. Because that's what you do. You know, you see three people sitting in a car and you kick their tire. And also, like, they kick the tire, seriously. And they obviously said the tire because if, you know, they said he kicked their car, they would say, well, where's the damage? Right, right. So, like, tires, they don't... It doesn't matter, though. The, yeah. Like, the reason doesn't matter. I mean, yeah. you beat a dude, like, you know, there's really yeah. not much of a reason to stab somebody a bunch yeah. of times with a screwdriver. But he actually got that money. And he literally, after being here for six months, packed his bag and... Whoosh, Went back to Canada. That's about a hundred thousand U.S. dollars, uh, give or take. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad. Not a bad, you know. Not a bad scam, <laughs> you know. Well, uh, yeah. All you gotta do is come to China. Come to what? North China. Convince, well, piss off a couple of Chinese there's, people there's enough to stab one. you. There, to... There's another scary story, and uh, one guy, he's a bit drunk. I, he, this guy, I knew. I didn't see the incident, but um, but you knew the guy. I knew the guy. I almost kicked his ass on one occasion. He's a um, teacher. Yes, he was a teacher. He was a teacher. And uh, he was known for getting drunk and just... He just became this, like, absolute pain in the ass. He was obnoxious. He was rude. He was disrespectful. He was like the stereotypical expat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ones that behave really badly. Like the guys that um, lost it in the McDonald's the other day that all started fighting. Um, you know, and the other guy that started smoking on the subway. Is that the is that the, the video where they were, like, throwing chairs and, like, beating up that woman? No, no, no. That was in that was in America. That was that, that in America? That was in America oh, I think. but they were Chinese people, weren't they? they? Chinese people. No, man. Yeah. This was four. This was four. I think there were four American guys, and there were like two skinny ones and two bigger ones. Okay. And they started fighting with each other. Okay. Um, but then there was another one. Um, where it was one guy from the UK, I think, started smoking on the subway or like on the train. Just started smoking. He started running his mouth it was in Beijing about how this is the middle kingdom and that's why it's okay for him to smoke on the subway I don't know he was a bit of a retard <laughs> but um anyway uh this other guy he I almost fought with him a few times because he was just obnoxious and like um you we were at a party and like he with the incident with me and like he started getting rude so I literally physically took him and threw him out and then he came back to the door and swore at me and yeah so I didn't speak to him for a bit but then he went to my back to my other friend's house mm. I mean, he wanted to watch the football. And he told him, look, you can come. It was 2 a.m. that the football was on. Um, but just don't come drunk. So what did this guy do? He came drunk. Pitched up drunk. Out of his mind. Broken. <laughs> and, um, you know, after being there for a while, my other friend who, who also, these two guys live together, both of my friends. Um, and uh, he managed to irritate the other guy. So the other guy threw him out. Yeah. So they went from the 25th floor all the way down to the bottom. They, um, he went, the, the guy who invited him, they went and got cigarettes and they came back. Yeah. So standing at the bottom, the woman that lives just below them on the 24th floor, she's known for pregnant lady was known for coming and complaining because we'd had a couple of parties there. Chinese woman. Chinese woman. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we had woken her up and you know, she couldn't sleep because the music was too loud or there too many people in there and whatever. She's pregnant. Yes. Yeah, she's pregnant. She's standing at the bottom. There's the drunk guy and there's my other friend. So what mm. does the drunk guy do? Slaps her on the ass and gropes her, but properly. Probably gropes her ass. Yeah. Yeah. So she turns around and tries to climb into him and my other friend like holds her back. So then- the She's trying to physical. She's trying to physically assault, dude. Like, like she's trying to get him back for grabbing her ass. Yeah. 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 So wait, no, wait, 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 wait. Elevator opens. Drunk dude hops in, goes up. So now my friend's busy waiting that just held her off. Get, takes the elevator with her up. She gets to the 25th floor. He goes to the 25th. By the time he gets to the 25th, securities of the, like, um, communities, they're busy talking to them. So the drunk guy causes a couple more problems. So then he decides, okay, you know, well, well, this isn't fun anymore. I'm drunk. I want to go drink more elsewhere. Decides to get into the elevator and go downstairs. He wants to leave now. Mm. Drunk guy. This drunk is, guy. This is, this... Gets into the elevator by himself. Okay. Elevator goes down, stops on the 24th floor, opens, some guy standing there with an axe and proceeds to hack him to pieces. Cut off his nose over here completely, 
cut up his back over here completely, split his hand all the way down. Literally, apparently his nose was hanging off to such a degree. Who was this that did this? This was the, the pregnant woman's brother did that to him. I, I don't want to sound like... I don't want to sound like that person, but I mean, he kind of deserved it, right? <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, no, look. You know, like I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't think people should hack people into pieces, but I mean, what do you yeah. expect if you if you grow up some pregnant woman, at two a.m. You know what? But like, I find it so, I find it so interesting. You know, like Chinese people are so accommodating on a good day. You know, it's like yeah. they, they're not. You know, sometimes they push, sometimes they shove, but you know what? As a foreigner being in a foreign country, I find them very accommodating for our misunderstandings. If if you can't speak Chinese, they will try. They're, they're not very good at it, but they will try to accommodate you. Um, if you're uncomfortable in an elevator because everybody's standing against you, they will try and make space for you sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes they'll be smoke, all smoking cigarettes, yeah. though, and your baby's yeah. in the elevator with you. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it, it really depends on the, on the yeah. person. And then for that guy to go and do that, like, I can understand why that happened, but I'm just... Uh, he lived. He did live, and and the Chinese doctors actually put him together really, really well. Like I, I want saw, to see a picture of this guy. Yeah, uh, he's like a he's like a super villain kind of Batman or Dick Tracy character. You know? Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll show you a photo. I wonder how how he tells this story. I'd be curious to hear his version uh, of the story. Yeah, dude. Well, the the people that told me this story, um, you know, there were three people there, and they all told me the story, dude. But apparently, there was so much blood. Um, and literally oh, when yeah. I visited them like a week later, um, and then they finally told me the story because it was all hush hush from the company. Um, and he worked for the same company as you? No, 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 no. He worked for the same company as my friends. Gotcha. As my friends. So the guy that invited him used to live with this guy, but then he moved because he was such an idiot. Mm. And then, you know, this happened. And then after that, after he had done that, and then apparently once, you know, he was lying there in the elevator, like messed up, bleeding everywhere. He's busy swearing at my friend who wanted to fight with him earlier, who tried to throw him out, saying it was his fault that he got cut up. Like it was his fault that he grabbed this woman's ass and, you know, the brother tried to chop him up with an axe. Then they finally get him to hospital and the whole family with like seven other people pitched up the hospital to try and finish the job. <laughs> yeah, no, dude, the North was the North was really crazy. Yeah, man. but even if it were just me or just a normal person and a normal just a normal woman from anywhere in the world that was pregnant and some drunk dude at two AM was groping your wife's ass. Uh, yeah, I mean anyone would be upset. I, I wouldn't hack a dude to pieces with an axe, but I I, I could see myself getting violent. Oh uh, yeah. You know? Maybe a pipe. <laughs> I got a baseball bat under I this feel, couch. I feel bludgeoning is fair. <laughs> chopping, chopping's a bit severe. I mean, you don't want to kill somebody yeah, for any no, reason, no, no. you know. But definitely, like, you know, injure them enough that they yeah. won't do it again. Yeah. I mean, it's not even about teaching them a lesson, is it? Because somebody that would do that is already pretty far gone. I think. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not like that person's gonna come to some moral realization after you beat them with an axe. Like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. But I think it's just like, oh, I shouldn't do that again because. Last time I did that, <laughs> I lost my nose and my fingers and stuff, you know? That is a crazy story. I don't have any stories like that, man. Yeah, no, dude. The North Living is... in Shanghai. Yeah, no, the, no Shanghai, Shanghai, Shanghai is civilized. You know, people, I find people think a lot more, but the North, man, the, the stuff that would go on over there was was really, really crazy. It's the kind of place that if you do see something go wrong, like if you like if you if you're busy like um like in in your normal western country if you saw like an old person crossing the road and they fell over and like they looked like they needed help um you would run and help them you know if they just needed to stand up or help picking up their groceries that they dropped or whatever you do that right in the north you don't do that you don't do that here either do you yeah you don't you don't do that in china as far as because that person will turn around you and, and say you know why did you push me over and then right. call everybody else and then they'll try and get money from you right you know? right um, that, that's what's created kind of i think that's a part of the creation of this culture of apathy and indifference is mm. that uh, people are afraid of litigation yeah they see somebody fall and they think oh this person is trying to scam me and so it kind of creates this and it's not even a 
an unreasonable fear. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if I see an old person fall on the street, knowing hell, am I going to go touch them? And it's because of that, not yeah. because I don't care. Yeah. But it's like, man, I you know I weigh the risks. I'm a foreigner. I don't want to go, and I don't want to get but it in, makes involved you feel with this. Selfish as well. It's weird. It's like yeah, it's right, like a bit right. of this internal battle. Like even my one friend who who. He works, he works, he still works at my old company. He came up here, you know, based on my YouTube videos and all the things that he saw. And he's very helpful. He's a very good person. He likes to help people. He's a very nice guy. Yeah. And we were busy walking and some, it was an old man and an old lady, very frail. And the old lady fell over and dropped her stuff. And he made like a movement, like he was going to go help. He was off to help. And I'm like, dude, if you go and help those people, like... You do not know what you're in for. Right. Like, and even everybody else also did the same thing. I'm like, there's a reason nobody's helping them. I said, if there's a camera, you just do not get involved because you do not know what that person's going to stand up and say about you. Right. And it also says a lot about the legal system here. The judicial system kind of allows these really outlandish lawsuits and outlandish yeah. cases to be tried. I just, I, I don't understand that. Like people complain about in the States about crazy litigation, but it's way crazier here, you know, to the point where people are just they're terrified to, to be involved with anything that's yeah. not. And that also in, um, people are already in this kind of bubble that, you know, people live in this kind of this bubble. I think that's a result of, it's one result of the, the density of the population that, yeah. you know, people are so, uh, they're surrounded by others all the time that they kind of have to create this insular kind of place that they live in. And I think people tend to to be indifferent for just because they've learned to live inside that bubble. It's kind of a necessity if you want to have any kind of private life. You just have to have a private life within the context of, you know, the larger environment. There's so many people here. You know, that's another thing. Privacy over here is something that it's it's done so differently, like how it's it's a right to look at somebody's phone while they're typing a message right you know yeah. it's a right to just walk over and like stick your head around like oh what's that person doing you know what they what are they saying to somebody else you know the, the i don't know if it means there's there's no privacy here or the privacy is different but they just seem to have oh another thing man so i don't know if you guys had to do this but to work at a kindergarten in shanghai you've got to do two medicals yep. how many did you do did you do two medicals or one? I didn't pull my dick out, if that's what you're going to ask me. Okay, here we go. <laughs> but I've right. heard but I've heard stories about people who had to do that. Okay, no, well, this, this is what we had to do the other day. Okay. Okay, so what <laughs> happened to the one guy? Luckily, they told us the story first, and we had a Taiwanese guy come with us, and he had to do the whole procedure as well. Mm. So we sent him in there first saying what we are going to refuse to do, and you refuse to do it first because you can explain to him why. So we luckily worked our way around this, but apparently we need to do a semen swap. What? A pre -cum, sorry, a pre-cum swap. Okay, so the first guy it happened to was <laughs> at a company last year. Really funny story. Why? And, I, dude, I don't know. It actually sounds really sketchy. If you work at a kindergarten, you need to do a, a, a special um, medical, okay, at which one point they um, do a semen swap. Pre-cum swap is what they call it. Okay, so what you're supposed to do is so apparently the, the doctor's supposed to do this. So the one guy, first time it happened, the one guy just walked in there and there's this really crummy old dude and it's the same old dude. Okay, and then he closes the door and the first thing he did was grab this guy's pants and try and pull them down. So this other dude, he's he's an American just out of Texas, you know, went to a like Christian school, Christian college his whole life, not very exposed to China, walks into some room with a really crummy, crummy old dude. And the first thing he does is grab his pants and try and pull them down. This guy was not impressed. So apparently he starts screaming, holding his pants up other hand, he tries to open the door. And apparently what's supposed to happen, this old dude's supposed to pull your pants down and take a swab and then like swab just inside the head of your penis like in your urethra that the... yeah like apparently you're supposed to get like all the way in there okay and apparently this uh... old man has to do it so after like hey, after... it has to be an old man the, 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 apparently <laughs> this old man this one dude's job that is his sole purpose as employment is to do this and yeah, like dude does does pre-cum just hang out around your urethra no, all the it time doesn't. it doesn't then that doesn't make sense no no dude the whole test doesn't make sense why do they need to do that like any any form of std will pitch up in the blood test that they'd taken just before that you know and i've already been in china for a month once you've done this you know it'll be there but 
Right. Aside from the point, apparently after that, okay, they said it's fine. Um, the foreigners don't have to let the old man do it, but the old man has to stand there and watch, you know, while you do this. So With like a Q-tip? Yeah, it's like an earbud, but like a bigger one. Okay, so apparently these other guys are doing it, but apparently the old man's like telling them to like get up in there. But they said it was like, Fuck get that. up in there to the point that they were uncomfortable, like it didn't feel right. Okay, and there, I am asking myself the question, if he's telling them to do that, apparently he actually wasn't satisfied that they didn't do it properly. You know, but he just gave up at the end of the day. What would have happened if you let the old man do it to you? I can just see him trying to jam a whole Q-tip down the tip of your dick. Like, that sounds extremely unpleasant. It's called sounding. Are you familiar with sounding? No. I don't want to get into too weird stuff. I I don't, yeah. (laughs) So sounding is is like a dildo for your your dick hole. Uh, Yeah. And some, dude, some people like it. Oh, to no each his own, you. but no old man's gonna stick anything yeah, in my yeah. urethra. I like I had to take a blood test and I almost passed out. Like I I'm actually feeling sick right now. Just just thinking about this, because something about medical procedures really bothers yeah, me, no. you know? Um the urethra thing, I would have gone home. Well you know for, what I mean? for for me it was better because when we got there, like, you know, the other guys had had lost it and like we were there with the the, the Taiwanese guy who <laughs> You I, sent the Taiwanese guys a guinea pig. <laughs> Get it going there. And yeah, just, no, but just he, try he this gets, out he before gets in us. the car and he says, "Well, <laughs> the first thing we need to get is an anal swab." But just tell them no for that. I'm like, mate, you tell me exactly what we're off to do right now, or like an anal swab gonna... and a urethra swab. No, we, the, the anal swab, like you could just skip entirely. What the hell? Who but would apparently... say? They say, okay, you have an option. But we can stick something line. up your ass, or not stick something up your ass. And you're yeah. like, I'm gonna go with not. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, like. Who 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 goes in there and says okay yeah, you know yeah, yeah. how how big uh, of this of a thing are we talking about like so f- for us we got lucky that our we, after going in there he said okay you guys just need to stand on the other side of the curtain are you sure this we, was a clinic no man this was a full blown <laughs> hospital this was like dude. This was a full blown like they took you to like, some back alley place where some old Chinese dude is sticking things oh. in your orifices. I don't know, man. Oh, man. Luckily, they, I, this like, didn't we happen to, to skip me. that, dude. Like, we, we just had to, like, stand behind there. You just whip it out for a second, pretend you're doing it, give it back. But he was really, he, dude, the old man was really grumpy. Like, when he found out he didn't have, like, it wasn't his, like, he wasn't, a, like, we didn't want him, like, sticking an earbud in our deck, dude. Like, apparently this irritated the old man. I'm thinking, what is wrong with you, dude? Maybe he's got some penis envy stuff going oh, on, considering no, his job. <laughs> <laughs> wow what a horrible story thank you for thank you for sharing oh, dude, dude. <laughs> another day in china that is that is the, the of the stories you've told that's the most horrible yeah because i can relate to it you know i can like i yeah i feel like i would rather encounter the guy with the axe yeah than the yeah. guy with the earbud <laughs> No, the, the, the airbag did. Luckily, we got away with it. But I feel like the guy who told the story about, you know, he was the, the first guy who ever walked into that room where the old man tried to pull his pants down and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. That dude, he, like, the other guy, because the other guy was telling us the story. And, you know, we're all, they like, eight of us sitting around the table. And the guy who's telling the story, he's laughing his ass off and we're laughing our asses off. We think this is the funniest thing in the world. The guy that it actually happened to. He's like sitting there with a dead serious face, look on his face, like angry at all of us. Like, guys, that 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 really wasn't funny. Like, I was actually really scared. Like, I wasn't happy. Like, dude, <laughs> nobody would be happy about that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Damn, dude. Yeah, that never happened to me. I just, when I took my test, I went into the, I you know, I had my wife with me at the time because um, I worked on, well. I, but it, I had to finally get a legitimate work visa. Mm. And uh, so I went in to take the test and I was scared. I was terrified because I have a blood, like, I'm afraid of needles. I don't like blood. Mm. Um, like, to a point that's really ridiculous. It's it's a, like a phobia, I guess. It's still on. You know, it's I'm just checking the battery on. life. We're still good. We should One have hour, about seven 30, minutes. Um, and I went in there and they took my blood and I, I nearly passed out and I actually had to sit down for a long time and they gave me like the, the sugar water to drink. Oh, yeah, yeah. I felt like a little bitch, but you know, it's like, I don't, I don't like needles, man. I don't like, I don't like blood. I have another, I told this story on my channel. I have a, uh, I have a story about, uh, my balls. I had, I had, I had some issues with my balls, man. I had an, <laughs> I had an infection in my balls Jeez. and I had to go to the, uh, I went, I ended up going to an international hospital. And um, 
showed a lot of people my balls, had my balls x-rayed, <laughs> or like they do the, you know, the thing they do with the pregnant women, the ultrasound, ultrasound my ball. I got, I got to see my <laughs> balls on a, on a, a, a screen, a big screen right Jeez, up above me. Okay. And the, the nurse is like, those are your testicles. And I was like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I can I, feel it. Right? I kind of figured that. And she said, you see that one? It shouldn't look like that. No. I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm here, you know? <laughs> but I got antibiotics and it was okay, but it was a horrible experience. That was uh, my, that's my medical story. I told my wife, I'm going to make a video about my balls. Is that okay? She's like, okay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, the, I think the other, the, like the, the, the two crazy stories that stick out was, um, I was teaching at this really fancy, pr- pretty much the fanciest school you could send your kids to in the north mm. um, because the training center that i worked for was the biggest one in that city um so they didn't have that many foreigners but it was quite well known um badly run like most training centers but yeah we we worked at the good schools and um you know your standard procedure they're like 60 to 80 children in a class they are so badly behaved they see the foreigners like yeah let's misbehave right and um you know i have like a three-step procedure so like if if they're misbehaving you know so First one, if you're pissing me off, I'll tell you. Shut up. Second, obviously not shut up. No, oh, I say shut up. Oh, really? Oh, okay. yeah. No, no, they, 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 they know up. what that means. And uh, second one, you stand up behind your seat. Third, um, no, it's actually a four-step procedure. Third, you stand in front of the classroom. Fourth, you go out the class, and then I don't invite you back in. You could do that? Hmm? I can't kick the kids out of class. I'm not allowed to do that. No, but that's for the training. For for the public schools, you can. For training center classes, you can't. Yeah, they won't. They would. They would freak yeah, out. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, that, I that, that, that I couldn't the class. do. That I couldn't do. Yeah. Um, I could refuse to teach if they. I've didn't. done. I've done that. Yeah, that you can do at the training center. The classes. They just get angry though. So yeah. I, I just have, I've just sat there for thirty minutes. Just let the kids do whatever they want. Like I give up today. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. No, no. I've done that too. But uh, the one kid, he, he, he was on his way out. He was about to be thrown out of the class. Yeah. And um, I had him standing in front of the class next to me at the board. So I said, you stand here. And then we stand exactly where I told him. And then um, as I turn around, uh, I said about, I don't know what I was saying. I said about three words. And there was just this giant explosion behind me. <laughs> uh, I don't know why that's so funny. <laughs> oh. And the thing is, I actually took a couple of seconds before I turned around. Because I'm like, you know, I've just been yelling at this kid all class. Like, I don't want to just see, I don't know if there's going to be blood behind me. I don't know if there's going to be missing teeth, broken bones. And then while I'm busy looking forward, I just see like this white start oh, moving I know forward. What, I know what it was. I know what it was. And I turn around and it's just white. And there's this little Asian kid, which is now completely white. <laughs> and what Dippy had done was, is there were two fire extinguishers in the front of the class. Wait, what was his name? Did you call him Dippy? Dippy, That's yeah. not his real name, though. No, no, Because no. we're in China, so you never know. You no, know? no, no. I would his not be surprised wasn't... if there was a kid called Dippy. No, Dippy. Yeah, so was... Dippy covered himself in, in fire extinguisher uh, powder. powder. Yeah. Well, actually, what he did was... is he <laughs> it, expl- it made an explosion sound? Dude, it made quite a big one, because actually, he, like, <laughs> what happened was is that he didn't, he, didn't, um, he didn't press them on purpose. He was... You know, they never stand up straight, so it's like leaning against the wall, mm. and he sat on them. There were two of them. He sat on both of them. Oh, he did it on set. accident. Yeah, yeah. No, dude, he he got a serious fright. And <laughs> both of them didn't have the pin. In. So he set off both fire extinguishers at the same time. Dude, he trashed the place. Was he crying? No, 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 dude. This kid literally like... And then the first thing he did was come running to me. And he's just wrestling off a Chinese at a rate of knots. Now, I have little to no Chinese. And a kid speaking at warp speed with like yeah. eyes the size of my head. Um, you know, like he got a serious fright, dude. He was like completely white. Um, and then the first thing, my assistant was quite good. She just ran straight to the office, fetched the teacher. And then the the lot, rest of the 15 minutes class was canceled and they just cleaned up all the all the powder everywhere. But yeah, man, that was, that That's was great. crazy. Dude. The, That's great. I, did you have footage of that? Like, uh, Oh, dude, I wish I did. Hey, I really wish I did. Like. Yo, that was so funny. Oh my god! If that happened where I work, all of the parents would have been would have crowded into that room, and yeah. all of the other kids, and everyone would have crowded in and made a really big deal of it. It would have been just, yeah, it would have been a nightmare. Yeah, this was at a public school, dude. Like it was, it was, it was quite good. Um, like the, there are no parents there. The training center class that would have been a disaster. Yeah, yeah. All the parents um, would come in and start blaming everyone and yeah, fighting yeah. and. And then the the, the second <laughs> big big disaster in class was uh, we had an autistic kid. 
He was actually quite good at English. He never paid attention in class. Mm. Um, usually he would pace up and down in the middle uh, of the classroom. Do, is that is that a, your own diagnosis? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but like, you know, with my stepmother being a, uh, a doctor and um, like one of, I, I call him like what, is pretty much my brother, like cousin and step cousin, mm. like her her sister's son, also named Matthew. Um, he's he's really autistic, but like this kid was bad. Like he couldn't sit <clears> still. <throat> um, yeah. He he would fixate on things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would usually pace up and down the classroom. Nothing anybody could do to stop him. He would randomly blurt out. He would. He was just like you know. Yeah. He wasn't really there. Yeah. And uh, the one class I get there, and he's got a two liter Coke bottle. And it's full of water, and it's sitting on the side over there. And then he's got the lid and a pair of scissors. And for the whole class, pretty much the whole class, he's just sitting there um, playing with the, the the scissors and the, the bottle cap. Mm. And eventually, he I'm like half watching him, like, why aren't you busy pacing up and down the class? And okay, I'm like, okay, he's not going to do anything today. Maybe it's going to be a pleasant class. He picks up the bottle cap, looks at it, looks at the two liter Coke bottle, screws it on, and then looks at all of it, looks up. And then I just, he stands up and then I just see this giant grin on his face. I'm like, what are you about to do? Takes the two liter Coke bottle and just starts to spray the whole classroom, mate. He wet everybody. He he wet he the- He planned it. Hmm? He planned it. Yeah, yeah. You know, dude, he planned on doing it the whole time. <laughs> he broke the projector. He broke the computer. He broke the monitor. Um, he wet a couple of people's phones to the point that they broke. He covered the whole classroom in water. Wow. Um, and I was standing by the door. I didn't put up with this. So, like, it was a training center class. Like I said, I refuse to teach if the children are too badly behaved. So, yeah. I just walked out. And then it took a while before some of the children walked out and the teacher stayed in the class. I mean, you just hear screaming, 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 screaming. Eventually, the screaming stops. And uh, the teacher stops yelling at him. And I just see the door open and the teacher's completely wet. And she stops screaming because he finally ran out of water. <laughs> he just trashed the whole place. He was having a good time, though. He oh, was, no, he he's... had a fantastic time. And afterwards, he couldn't care less. He felt like he had done nothing wrong. <laughs> he just had this giant grin on his face, carried on his normal, spectacular. So, another day teaching in a training center. Yeah, yeah. I'm. My, my days are more like, I wish that I had like stories but mostly the the what permeates my day is just mundaneness you know like mm. just boring it's the same thing every day it's always misbehaved kids they always misbehave they don't listen you have to tell them to sit down shut up they think it's funny to to be stupid they think being stupid yeah. is funny Timmy dong Timmy dong <laughs> Timmy dong they do that all the time you know i don't understand i don't get it i don't understand what you're saying what 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 Shema. yeah teacher's a girl <laughs> teacher's a girl uh-huh, teachers yeah. a girl. Also, uh, how they fixate on things they don't understand. Like, like for me, like uh, you're too tall. Apparently, that that's a thing. And then my other friend, like, they if they fixate on the fact, no, your nose is too big, sort of a thing. You know, like tiny little things. You know, and they'll just sit and hit that thing. Yeah. How harsh they are. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. also spectacular. Hey, yeah. if somebody's fat. Oh my god. In the classroom, they yeah. rip that guy to shreds. Yeah. His name is Pig. Don't call him Max. Pig, 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 <laughs> oink, 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 oink. And they shred the poor guy. Yeah. You know? If... Even the fat kid will say, I'm fat. Yeah, no, yeah. it's it's I'm like, fat. I don't I don't understand. Mom it's says like... I'm fat. Mom beats me with an umbrella because I'm too fat. Just like, Jesus, man. Christ. That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude. Some of the stories here. Ugh. Yeah, I'm not. Cringe inside. I, you know, I used to, I used to like working with kids a lot. I worked in special education and for seven years before I came here, and, and I, I liked it. I, I worked at an orphanage for a year in Nepal. I liked it, but this this job has beaten that love completely out of me. There is one only one kid that I like, and it's mine, and all other kids can just go away forever. <laughs> you know? I, just, I can't stand them anymore. It's just the – I think the – it's not the education system here necessarily. It's ESL. You know, mm. I have my own issues with the education system, but I haven't had too much experience with it. But I have had experience just in that particular subject here because it's all that I've done is ESL in private okay. ESL public schools, uh, private schools, public schools, international schools all over, you know, and um, I'm just tired of it. I'm just sick of it. There's no job satisfaction. That's no. the that, that's the thing is that like 
when when I worked in South Africa, like I, I started a f- few businesses, like you know, my family helped out a lot. Where I did temporary tattoos that that made quite a bit of money. Like um, hammer, hammer, uh, called hammer, henna, 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 yeah. Henna. <clears throat> Not henna. It was a different kind of thing. It was a spray on through with an airbrush. Gotcha. Um, and then I used to do leather work. Um, That's cool. As well, um, I actually made this. That was that was my other big one. So like that was one solid piece of kudu leather, and I stitched it and cut it. And oh, that's it. cool. That's really cool. You can sell this for a lot of money, right? Yeah, no. Well, I did. This was yeah. Well, in, in the states, it was it was more, and then I made bags and stuff, and you yeah, know, I did I did various things, you know. But there was I didn't make as much. I made far less money than I make now, but there was satisfaction yeah. at the end of the day when somebody bought my leather bag, and you know it it worked very well, and all of that. There was that that inner thing that I did something good, you know. I worked hard and it paid off. Over here, um, you know, like the first week at my school, you know, I tried to do my sort of teaching that worked, and then, you know, it didn't work, and then the teachers didn't want to help, and then it just didn't work. So all that I did was drop my standards. You know, I yep. did a worse job at teaching them. I taught them less. Right. I taught them worse, and now all the teachers are happy um, because they feel I'm doing my job now. But inside, you're like, I like, I don't know, man. You, you, it's, it's, it's a very, it's a lazy man's job, and I'm not a lazy person. Uh, yeah, but it requires a lot of emotional stability to do. Yeah, it, it, it's. I mean, I agree with you that you don't have to put a lot of intellectual work into it, but it mm. certainly requires a level of sanity that I don't think a lot of people have. The, you know, you're talking about the feeling satisfaction and the reason that you don't is because it's not a real industry it's not real work it isn't yeah and that's why you don't feel that you know like when you teach when you actually teach you're contributing something to to the world or you, yeah, or whatever you actually it, teach yeah, yeah in, in any environment a community you're contributing something or you're yeah. helping people or at least you're doing some job that that extends outside of you whereas in with esl it's just a completely superficial industry that it's more about pictures on wechat of you and the kids and it's more mm. about the parents telling their their friends you know a, a white dude teaches my kids english you know uh, american eh? an american yeah american uh, and he's not from africa <laughs> <laughs> and he teaches my kids english and that's the big thing right so there are parents who are good parents i've worked in in a private setting with good parents mm. where that's an, it's i'm not saying that's always the case but in a big uh like a business it's a business ESL is a business and the training centers are, are notoriously just their businesses. You know, they're mm. not, they're not centers yeah, of education. Cows, yeah. Right. So it's difficult to feel like you're, it's difficult to feel motivation to do anything because yeah. you're contributing to the bottom line, which is just money. Yeah. And, and then you feel kind of like, I, I liken it a lot to moving rocks. Like, you know, to like if somebody brought you to a big field and they said for the next five hours you're going to move rocks move them from one side of the field to the other and the next day you come back and just do it over and over again it's kind of like that yeah. it's like well i'll pay you a lot of money to do it but if, but at the end of the day you're, it's just you feel empty because yeah. it's, you're not actually contributing something to any to anything bigger than you you know and that's what i think that's what being human is all about people want to progress and make the world a better place and i think that's an innate thing so within you know this within esl not in every case but generally with esl it's just a superficial thing that's why you don't feel you know that's why people burn out so fast here i've actually suffered burnout a couple of times like i thought i got sick but you actually just burn out from like mental mentally too oh man you just and it it affects you physically to a serious degree where you you you're you're sick and you, you run down you actually just run out of fuel and you just you basically oh, man it's a horrible feeling like and then you you yeah. go to class and you're just dead inside and ugh. yeah dude yeah i have the right. stairs sometimes the what's it called the thousand yard stair and just like uh <laughs> yeah you know this trauma for this esl trauma i just want to when i get out of china i'm never going to teach again never going to teach again yeah. i don't know what i'm going to do but i'm not going to ever teach again yeah we got to we got to wrap up I, I i want to for you to be able to um uh, you have a channel. You have a YouTube channel. So uh, yeah. plug plug away, man. Plug your channel. So uh, I make travel logs, uh, vlogs, where I go around and I do a bit of exploring. I'm busy doing a bit of revamping at the moment, um, giving my channel some direction. It's all about living a better life, how to do things better, how to be better, how to have fun. 
I by no means want to tell people how to live their lives. I just want to show people how I live mine. And, you know, if you enjoy it, take a look at it. Um, link in the description below. Yeah, yeah. I'll put a link. I mean, you can give them the... Maybe you have one of those convoluted URLs, though. Yeah. You can change your URL if you have over 100 subs. Oh, really? Yep. You can That's do good. a custom URL. So um, I, th I think it's 100. And you can only change it once. Once. Yeah. Yeah. You see, I made a mistake at first because I changed my YouTube channel to, 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 to a Chinese YouTube channel. And then you can't monetize a Chinese YouTube channel. So right, then right, right. I took my old South African one and then I merged the subscribers across. Can you do that? You can. I yeah. did not know that. You can. You can merge it. You can merge it across. But you merge the, the actual channels, meaning yeah. that you take the videos and the subs. And yeah, you so move you them suck all. the one into oh, the other. Oh, shit. I did not know that. Yeah. That's how I did it because you can't change the region of a YouTube channel. Huh. I'm going to have to look into that. Yeah. I have I have a couple of other channels that I posted just some like traveled stuff way back mm. when I started in Nepal. Um, yeah, I'll put the link in the description section. Oh, thanks, man. This is Matt. Matt, what's your last name? You have a cool last name, but Mackay. I forgot what it is. <laughs> Matt Mackay. Yeah. Matt Mackay. It's a detective name. Detective name. Yeah, Matt. <laughs> I'm Matt Mackay. Like if Matt Mackay comes to your door, you're like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's Matt Mackay's here. It's like you know? a, I feel like a, I always thought about like in South Africa, everybody would call me Twitch. Why? Uh, like a lot of people, because I can never sit still. Like if I was sitting in class, I'd always jump my leg. And yeah, something I do that too. Like that. I do that too. And, um, you know, like a lot of people in South Africa, especially in PE, Port Elizabeth, where I grew up, hmm. um, a lot of people actually didn't know my real name was Matt or Matthew. They just called you Twitch. Yeah, they just called me Twitch. Like the kid from South Park. Yeah, well. Um, he drank know, a lot of coffee there. No, his name wasn't Twitch. His name was. Uh, it was similar though. Uh, I forgot his name, but he he drank a lot of coffee. Yeah, like he's got the he's got the sticks as well. Oh oh oh! oh I forgot oh, his name. I can't believe it. I used so, to watch that show all the time. Yeah, but yeah, I had one incident where I went on holiday, and um, you know, I forgot to message my mother, and she phoned my friend's parents to find out where I was. Yeah, and she asked, "Is Matthew there?" And of course, said friend's mother did not know my name was Matthew. Mm. She knew me as Twitch. So she answered, there's no Matthew here. <laughs> At which point my Who mother... I think your lost... real name is Twitch, though? They, like, well, I guess... Yeah. No, that's that's how well... Twitch is a known name, man. Twitch is a well-known name. Twitch is the dude who smokes too much meth, though. Yeah. You know? It's like yeah. Twitch or like, what do they call that? Uh, uh, Tweak. Tweak. Yeah, there you go. Tweaking. Yeah. Tweak, good. you don't want that name. All right, cool. Yeah. Matt has been good. Um, check out his YouTube channel. I put the link in the description section. You got anything else to say? Yeah, we did a video today. America versus South Africans opinion on China, which will be on my channel and also be in the link in the description below. Check it out. Yeah, and I guarantee you yours will be up way before this one goes up. <laughs> I'm not lazy, but I'm, I'm far behind in my... But I'll oh, that's no worries, man. All right, cool. So thank you for watching Triad Travelogues. I'm Richard. This is Matt. We'll see you next time.